Their history is totally fictional. They, had, they didn't establish that the Bible identifies the Caucasian sure, sure. at all. Anyway, so yeah, back yeah, to yeah, our yeah, diocesan structure. Yeah, so um, go on, your thoughts. Right, yeah, well, I've, I've been, uh, I mean, I was away from the church and I came back into the church through the diocesan structure. I went through that period where before you're confirmed, uh, before you receive Holy Communion, I was a baptized Catholic, but I went through all of these things and became a uh, nominal Christian. And um, because of my disordered previous life, I thought that was a really great place to be. Was a normal Christian, you know. But um, I remember coming away from the program, and I, I don't remember anything he said. Never talked about the real presence. Never talked about contraception. Never talked about sin. Never talked about any moral things. No church history. Yeah. It was really just pat. And uh, and we were kind of living this kind of life where we weren't what we were, but we obviously didn't feel satisfied being staying where we were. So. Uh, we experienced a few of these lay movements within the diocesan. Within a diocese, you also have these lay movements that are operating sometimes with the blessing of the priest or the bishop, sometimes without. So you'd have things like Opus Dei, you'd have, which we kind of, you know, let with. So there's a yeah. few of those. Franciscans, kind of things. Benedictines, yeah, Franciscans, Dominicans. Things like that. Yeah. Uh, but they would be for people who wanted to explore their faith a little, faith a little bit deeper. But mostly what we found was. You would, you would have the gospel reading and then the priest would basically just tell you the gospel again but just break it into small sections and just said as we can see Jesus said this so you'd come away from church you'd receive communion and at the time I didn't even think of it as a, as a I know that this communion when we talk as Christians this is one of the things that divides lots of Christians yeah. but we didn't think of it as anything special yeah. and uh, so we were living a life you know, as we were but uh, as, as we grew in our faith going to a more traditionalist parish where people seem to take their faith more seriously and that actually infected us and what was it what was it about that parish it was a traditionalist parish they had um, people there who let's say it was pious I saw piety which which intrigued me yeah and I know that piety is not substitute for a relationship with Christ yeah but I could see that these people were acting different to the previous guys yeah previous kind of structures but I always felt that there was something radically missing in what the flock were being fed. The priests were there, almost like people working in a, in, a, in a restaurant. They would give you your sacrament, they would hear your confession, they'd marry you and bury you, but you would not see them again. It's the, it was the factory, it's the factory production line of exactly. sacrament, sacramental, uh, sacramentalization. Yes, yeah. And, yeah. and also- The sausage got, factory yeah, approach. And also you got the impression that they didn't want to talk to you about anything else, nothing yeah. challenging, albeit they would attempt the only kind of things that kind of intrigued me were when they were quite radical on more liberal elements because I was naturally quite a conservative person yeah. I thought they seemed very free in to expand their popularity base to get as many people to like them as possible and I think that was one of the most important things for them yeah but then so uh, let, let, let's yeah, try yeah, and, yeah. and boil that down into, let, let's, let's, let, let's, let's try to boil that down into something because what it seems that you're indicating is that there was a lack of a uh, profound spirituality Definitely. amongst the clergy Yes. And that, that, that the, because I, I think that one of the problems of the, the diocesan structure, yeah. um, and, and also a faith that just, that, that emphasizes the sacraments mm. to the exclusion of a wider spiritual context, yeah. is that it ends up being the, the, the sausage factory of religion. Yeah. You go in, you receive your sacraments, factory, yeah. job done, you yeah. go out. And that's what we see. We see lots of parishes where lots of Christians, mm. their entire spirituality is to go to church. Their entire, we're just this is having, good. This yeah. is good. This we're is having good. one yeah. conversation, yeah. bro. Yeah. So yeah. like, it's all right. So it's a, 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 a sausage factory version of religion mm. that, that almost cultivates a lack of discipleship yeah. Yeah. because people think if they've got the sacrament, they've done their bit, yeah. the religion bit is done, and then they just go home and 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 that's not that's one not one hour a week yeah where you would have any participation in anything remotely religious yeah and we felt as a family when my wife and i were we were we were when i say born again I'm a, i consider myself a born again catholic not in the sense that because we understand as, as apostolic christians born again is baptism but there's also a process that people go through when they are passing through they, they, they're repentant of their sins and they're trying to move closer to god yeah so i very much me and my wife were going through that but once we had children and i i realized because i 
come from a very damaged kind of base because of pornography yeah. alcohol. Yeah. We realised that we didn't want our children to be who we were. Yeah. But we also didn't want them to be who we were within the Christian thing there because nobody was interested. Yeah. This, this was not sufficient enough to pass on. It was of no value. It would have been no value and to my, 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 my parents. And, my and, and, and that is the point. A lot of the, a lot of the, the Catholic structures of parish systems and dioceses they're not really offering anything to their surrounding society. Sure. They are they, they are just meeting up on a Sunday yes. and, and maybe once in the middle of the week. And I don't think that that marries up well to what actually the New Testament teaches in terms of its value system. Because yes. when you look at the New Testament scriptures, it talks about people sharing life together. Yeah. Talks about people living in one another's homes, eating together, breaking bread together, yes. praying together, mm. listen, you know, with a zeal for the apostolic teaching, the prayers, the breaking sure. of bread and the fellowship. Sure. Sure. And, and that requires that Christians actually live close to one another. And I think yes. one of the reforms that needs to happen within the diocesan structure yes. is actually to, to, to get Christians to move literally closer together. Yes. To live life with one another yeah. in a much closer remit, in a bulge, sure. in, a, sure. in, a, in a bulging community. This, this might help in just because I'll try and speed through to where, we, where I am now. Yeah. But we were invited by a friend who saw maybe us light a candle or something and thought, well, maybe they, could, they want to hang around. You know, that was just a very small thing, but it, was, it, it meant a, a lot to somebody. And they invited us to join this Catholic family group. We went to the Catholic family group and there was about six or seven families who were all believing in it. They yeah. actually talked about God and how God played a part in their lives. Yeah. And from that group, it, it, uh, it, it, it lit a fire in us and a hunger for more. And then, just to, to, to tie it back to what you were saying, so after a, after a long journey, we finally found other families who felt similarly to us and similar to what you said. We felt that we needed to, we were homeschoolers, uh, we're open to life. Yeah. Once you do that and you give everything to God, He changes your life. Yeah. And I think being open to life is something huge. I really, really do. But any, anyway, we ended up in Ireland with a group of four or five other families. It was a traditionalist parish in Athlone, which was a long way away. But effectively, we'd landed there. It was like four families sailing across the Atlantic Ocean, finding themselves in the, in the new land. Yeah. And everyone bought their own home. The home was really cheap. You know, you can get a couple of acres for 30 for, for the For the sake of drawing out the good bit, yeah. What I'm going to ask you to do, and I'm sorry, no, no, please, I is need you to, 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 to skip the narrative of how you came to your conclusions right. yes. and to draw out the conclusions yes. and let's, so okay. that we can spend more time talking okay. about the conclusions yeah, good, good rather than the, the life story of how you got to those yeah. conclusions. So the conclusions we had, first of all, were we needed to be, have a far more intimate relationship to sustain our faith with other Christians. Yeah. We realised that to just stay in the, on the, in the parish where you only see these people, they drive in, they park up, they're, 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 they're worried about when, when the parking's finished, they're straight off. Yeah. The priest is still probably hasn't they even may be a cup of tea yeah, after the mass exactly. yeah. yeah so we found ourselves attempting to do it on our own as families without any 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 help from any 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 church satellite kind of group yeah so four or five families had a go at doing exactly what you're saying yeah and I found that it quickly unraveled because there were four or five families who were used to being with each other but not intimately yeah not sharing four or five days so how do how, how do we, what what is the reform that we need to get that intimacy my my analysis of the challenge would be the Christians who want to live a closer more early church communal existence they have to have a when I say a charism uh, they have to have some in the early church you had deacons you had priests you had but these priests had a pastoral role in the lives of their flock yeah they that lived was, close together exactly the priest would be accessible 24 7 he could guide your spiritual life in action but i think the intimacy went once christianity exploded to the point that to be honest the factory thing is is when you get to millions and millions and millions of yeah. christians the intimacy is gone i, I think and 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 and, and that, that's something that the, the church struggled with. So, yeah. so be in, in the apostolic times, you would have a bishop who, who maybe oversaw 30 people yeah. in an entire city. Yeah. That was his parish, that was his, that was his diocese. Sure. Today, in theory, mm -hmm. you have a, a bishop that might oversee thousands of, of baptised sure. Christians, of which only hundreds actually only are discipled or, or only hundreds even come to church. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that 
that one of the one of the reforms that we need within the diocesan structure mm. is to create Christian communes yeah. and then have people connected to those Christian communes yeah. in various degrees of intimacy. So you've got a you've got a Christian commune yeah. where people are living together in a, with a shared purse. Yeah, yeah? And they're, they're living life by a shared rhythm, yeah. a lay monasticism. Sure. And then you, around where that commune is based, other Christians move into that area. Historically, that has always been the case with monasteries. The monasteries, yes. the neighbourhood would end up being the centre of a town. Yeah. The monastery would be there, and from there it would pull people in who wanted the leadership and the, and the pastoral care. Yeah. And, and this is what I think we need to, to explore. Yeah, and, and, and I think, I think an, an, another thing that you've mentioned, which I agree with, is this idea that the diocese or, or diocese structures have to recapture yeah. the idea of spirit fathers of confession spiritual fathers spiritual directors yeah. and that the, the individual Christians have someone to whom they are accountable yeah. for their Christian journey sure, sure, sure. who's someone who's doing that incisive yeah. cutting work at a surgical level sure. to the soul in the hope of discipling someone to come to the fullness of maturity in Christ. I must admit, I'm fairly pessimistic on the basis of, of my own experience with seeing how various dioceses I've been part of operate. And the one thing that most of the priests are, they're quite territorial and quite suspicious of new ideas, things that might rock the boat. So what I felt led to is, is to say, the di I, I think they're beyond repair as far as being able to influence them to some radical change. Yeah. But I think the route we followed was to, from the diocese, there will be people whose faith will lead them into a deeper journey, and that's where we need to meet them yeah. outside of the diocese. It's got to be a coalition of the willing. Yes. Yes, I agree with you. Exactly. It has to be a coalition so, of the willing. So it's never going to come from the bishop. Yeah, yeah, and it's not going to come from it, the priest. It isn't going to happen. So this is why I think that we need, and we had the conversation before, where we need to more establish our own initiatives our own initiatives and our, our own communities our own collectives but what I experienced I experienced two types there was a collective which was the Bruderhof where people sh they were very much acts kind of the yeah Essene yeah I've met the Bruderhof yeah. I know about the Bruderhof but then I was more drawn to the end of the collective they would have a communal a dispersed community living in close proximity yeah but each family was a standalone unit yeah because one thing with the Bruderhof was the the family was secondary to the unit to the Bruderhof yeah so they had poor child care the women would go out to work and make things and they would see that there was it was almost like something from 1930s Germany yeah, was, yeah, I, mean, yeah, I, yeah I liked what I saw come back as far as the spirituality but there were some things there that I thought families were, weren't meant to participate in at that level and with the Amish Mennonites that we live, this is just an example of what happened. They had a church building, and around that church building, they had a factory that made wooden furniture. Yeah. The men who were part of the Brotherhood, they would work in, in the factory. Everybody would be involved, not just in the spiritual life, but in the working life. Yeah. And they also met the world in that bulge that we were talking about. They owned a shop, uh, uh, a, a petrol station, yeah. shop and a bakery. My, my family used to work, so you've got something that isn't just Meet, meeting on a spiritual level, but on a practical, it's all, all encompassing kind of Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The, the, the church has to create a society within society, exactly. in which we create our own businesses, we create our own economy, we, we move in and we coalesce together, celebrate our own feasts, celebrate our own feasts have our own culture, even even have distinctive dress like you know I was discussing with some Bruderhof about the distinctive dress and you know within the Bruderhof there's this debate about should we, we should we get rid of the old peasant dress that they wear and, yeah, yeah and I'm saying no double down on it actually no, I, I, I must like admit, I, I felt that the modest dress and the being recognizably different to the world amen is very very important if people are straddling the two and they see yeah. they will come to you and exactly ask you, who are you or they'll run away or they'll run off and if they, if they run off, you'll have left an impression on Yeah, them. exactly. Either way, they didn't they didn't ignore you. Yes. But but the yeah. thing is, lots of Christians, lots of Christians, when when we do the Sunday thing, yeah. when we have that, par that, that, that that spiritual life that's just about meeting on a Sunday, mm. it, it, it's clearly not having an impact. No. It's clearly not discipling people. Yeah. Catholic parishes are dying right across the Western world. Yeah. And they are dying not because the spirituality isn't there to feed them. Mm. They are dying because because the church is, is structured in a way that the goodness of that spirituality never finds good soil. The earth is not worked. 
Uh, in, yes, interesting because the people are working in the world, and when the seed is sown, to be so involved in the world, watching the world's movies, doing the world's things, and all of that, the seed that you're getting from the church, it is just like I forget yeah. what degrees it was. It's very difficult to ha allow that to have an impact when you're in love with the world and everything the world offers. I mean, one 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 really radical agenda, you know, that yeah. might inspire ideas. Yes. You know, is is for a bishop to sell off every failing parish, to use the millions of pounds that are raised, to buy properties close to, yeah, to buy to buy properties or tracts of land either close to the cathedral, sure. or close to the church that is most uh, uh, efficient for the needs of an yes. active community, yes. and then move the willing into it, yeah, yeah. and then and then build it. But I, but I think I one. I was actually part of that. I don't, can I, I'll, be, I'll be very, yeah. very No, no, brief. go on. In our journey, I've been to places maybe I shouldn't have been, but I wanted to see what was going on and maybe draw something from it. So we found ourselves with a group of Pius X. At the time, there was schismatic part. They would say they yeah. weren't, but they were. But I think they're now more regularised. But what we saw was this group of Catholics, right, what they'd done, they bought the Church of Ireland church, turned it into a Catholic church, homeschool families, about, about 30 families were yeah. all satellite around this one church and they did what they wanted to do when they wanted to do it taught what they wanted and, 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 and I think that was the model the dads were doing their own thing they were working either in the world or home business but they were living around this place that this, this, this group Pius X had the money to just say we're going to buy this church of Ireland thing it was, it was, it was, it was no one was, yeah. you know, desolate I think, I, think, I think another thing that, that every diocese needs to have there, there's a couple of things that I think every diocese needs to have um, one of them one of them as well as this community. So yeah. let's imagine that, that the coalition of the willing establish a commune. Okay, yeah. Within that commune, there has to be dedicated evangelists and a culture of evangelism, sure. regular evangelism, uh, intelligent evangelism, yeah. evangelism that isn't just singing songs on a street corner, but evangelism that is adapted to our society today, that engages people in conversation and then draws them into that community. Because mm. one of my one of my kind of criticisms of the Bruderhof and the the, the the Mennonites is that yeah they've got this bulge and yeah they, they have these access points where you can engage yeah. but within their spirituality they are quite bashful about going out and doing street evangelism yes. by going out and engaging with people in public they almost dismiss it as being harmful or inaccurate or I've, I've spoke yeah, with the Bruderhof, they say. frustrating when and that's wrong. I, yeah. that, that is the case. They would go out and sing on the street corner. They don't, they have not, they, they, they don't relax. For them, converts isn't as important as raising their children to be members of their community. Yeah. So they're very successful at one. In fact, I think they're more successful, they gain more what they're doing of what they want than to say, well, look, sorry, you go to school, I'm going to go off and evangelise somebody. Yeah. I'm sure there is a balance that can be struck based on the early church model. Yeah. So, and again, as we talked before, the, Bruderhof and the army they're not doing anything Bruderhof and Arms, they're doing things what the early Catholic Christian Apostolic Church used to do yeah but they preserved them and this is why they were it's worthy analyzing their failures some of the points that could be adapted but I really do think that in these days in, in these latter days if I could say when things yeah. are looking very very black that Christians and I mentioned to you before should should I think if they are ever going to move, to move next to another Christian who they can tolerate. My problem was, I expected everybody to be like me and I would be quite demanding. Now I think if you can trust somebody and say, I'm here for you when I need you, that's huge in this day and age. Yeah. And that would be enough. So but, I mean, living in a commune is not the easy option. Living no, in a no, commune no, is need, a difficult option. Living in, living in community yeah. is not an easy option. Sure. But all Christian values come to their fullest expression when Christians live in community. I, I think that something else that you've touched on that, that every diocese really needs is a, a either a homeschooling network or a Christian school that will teach a Christian education. My brother's doing that. Yeah. Start that. What he's doing is starting a satellite school. He's a teacher. He's going to leave his job. He's going to do it for free. And homeschooling families come twice a week to them and they can the church hall is yep. one good thing the diocese is they still have the facilities you can say father we've got some people here can we do it so so you've got homeschooled families who are going to come to the diocese going to be taught going to be going to be assisted in their education to free them up from that response and, and that also helps to protect our children from the the secularization and the liberal progressive ideology that's now being very forcefully pushed onto children you know 
I think another, th another, because I, I think schools, I think a commune and forming around a community are very important. Yeah. I think that that Christians need to have an educate, um, sorry, they need to have uh, dedicated evangelists and a culture of evangelism. Sure. They, they they need to have parish priests, pastors who are intimately connected, spiritual fathers yeah. who are intimately woven into that community, sure. so that they're not this strange authority figure who you see. Uh, once in a while, but someone who does feel like it like a like a friend or a father sure. Someone that you can go to and you know, I've got this problem. Can we pray problem, about it? Can we talk about this spiritual is issue? Discovered this and I was talking to a priest who who wanted to do that But because the diocesan structure They don't have enough priests for there to be any priest unless he's from a particular charism to be released from his job To then give himself to you, but in America there was one who was a black priest and he said I'm leaving I'm, I'm with you and he went with his homeschool group of people and they went off to somewhere and did whatever they did but very few priests would do it but monks are more more uh, they seem to appreciate that a bit more because quite often some of the groups that I've been involved with there would be uh, brothers and sisters from various Franciscans of the Renewal yeah. a variety of these kind of people who would come down and spend time with the children give them some catechesis play with them they would see a young smiley nun instead of an old man who doesn't want to know yeah. them and those kind of things could all play a big part i mean it's it's it's, it's, a, it's a very varied thing but i think that what i was it's got to become a living organism exactly exactly but I, I i was fed up talking about things and i would talk to my friends for years and the years would go by and after we'd finished moaning we wouldn't really have much time to thinking about well what are we going to actually going to do but how can you do it unless the structures are there and that's why it's important to create that community, that 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 intimate yeah, yeah. commune, you know. And, and maybe sure. maybe particularly those in the Catholic structures should think about moving in around the monasteries, yeah, or, or setting up their own communes. The big problem there, Bob, is that most fathers at the moment, because of the economic burden they have, they don't move very very well they actually stay where they are but the people that i'd known were, were were more wanting to live a radical life and willing to live a life not of poverty but a, a life of radical frugality yeah and so what they did we, we cashed our chips in here we took a small amount of equity we found a place where we could buy the maximum tract of land and we would live in a place where you go and dig the peat and you'd go and live, you'd live a fairly fairly yeah. life like that but unless people are actually willing to to radically alter their lives from the safety and the security to, to give your life to the gospel very few people are able to to do that but but that's why that's why moving in around a commune can help because there are communities that already exist where this is happening yes, yes. so if we coalesce because the thing is the one of the one of the reasons why the diocesan system the parish system is failing yeah. is because it's spread too thin and, 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 and we're trying to maintain buildings that we can't maintain just for the sake of maintaining yes. a building. Yeah, they're listed and they say yes. Yeah, and let them go. What we need to do is we need to consolidate. Yes. When Christians consolidate, then we will be more effective. Because when, when you're in a war and you're losing that war because you're defending too many spaces, yeah. when you consolidate, you make your, your chance of defending those spaces stronger. Yes. And by consolidating, yeah. it means that you create this energy from which you can punch outwards. You know that, that you, I think you've now brought us to where we need to identify the first step, is the consolidation. From, because from that consolidation, Come. Yeah, but it won't happen until you consolidate because we keep sliding and sliding. So every bishop needs to identify places within his diocese to consolidate. Yes. And use we've we've got huge amounts of money locked into buildings. Let's just sell them, sure. bring the community together, and start doing real discipleship. I would say another thing that needs to happen, particularly within the Catholic structures, yeah. is that the church needs to take mental health seriously. Okay. Mental health issues, I have noted are very are, 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 are disproportionate mm. in in parish systems I, i've worked in lots of I've, I've been in lots of parishes i've seen yeah. lots of parishes there's a lot of there's a lot of mental health issues a lot of depression a lot of people borderline on the uh, the, the excerpt the, the, the sort of fringes of society and and they young girls it's epidemic portion yeah but 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 if we became a place where we look after mm. our own community by employing or by employing Christians who've got the training in psychology and counseling sure, sure. and start caring for the mental health of our own parishes and 
and building those people up. Yeah. We then might be in a position where we can bless everyone around us. Yeah, yeah. But 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 it's also about taking the people you've got and moving them forward. Yeah. And and the reality is that lots of people with mental health issues are coming to the church because inside the church they find people that will tolerate them. Yeah. They will find people that will make time for them. Get the sign of peace, which is maybe something they never have the whole week. Yeah, they, they might get some. Their yeah, exactly. And and, 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 and maybe someone yourself. will talk to them over a cup of tea and make yeah, them feel human. Yeah, yeah. But we need to take mental health yeah. as a serious thing, so that every diocese has a counselor or a psychologist, and anyone who's struggling in various different things, maybe a, a couple is struggling in their marriage or a child is struggling because they've received this kind of, uh, you know, uh, some kind of problem, teenage years, depression, yeah, yeah. And, and that we've got, we've got the means to help our own. What do you think of this, not being, because I'm quite pessimistic, I must admit, but I have, a, have an eternal hope, but pessimistic as far as what's going on at the moment, that I've done this before where I've said, in my mind, you know, when you daydream, I think, you know, this needs to happen, and this needs to happen, and this needs to happen, and it should happen, but it's not going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what I'm left with is 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 identifying things that need to happen on a macro level yeah. that aren't going to happen, or starting to think more on the micro level, the bottom up as opposed to. It's got to. I think it will come bottom up. Yeah, I think it, it will. It will start bottom up, and then when it's seen to start working and and yeah. bearing good fruit, yeah. then it will start to come you down. Know, what do you think of this? I I, I was I was. Just bear with me just for a few minutes because I think it illustrated something that, that touched me. There was a group called the Neo Catechumen of Way, okay, and they are very, very big in South America. They're quite, I don't know if they're liberal, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, two men were walking down the street in our, uh, and they came into our church. They're two Spanish guys and they just said, Can we see the priest? And the priest wasn't particularly interested because obviously there's some charism. Basically, the Neo Catechumen of Way, they sent 80 pairs of people who didn't know each other on a bus with no money, one way ticket, and just to live for one week and then come back and share what happened with them to their community so they're building structures where they send people out bring them in and all of those kind of things but but going back to this what can we put into effect personally that might bring about some of the things that we hope to happen on a, on a bigger scale what we're doing here right now is a good step um, so a personal thing yeah please. Uh, and I think you've probably done a lot of them yeah one is get involved in the homeschooling movement yeah two is get move in near to a christian commune a, a christian community a deliberate christian community like the bruderhof like the mennonites like you know like the um the antioch community that that lives in acton okay. um move in move in and around these different groups yeah. um the, the the that that's another thing yeah. the other thing is you know we, we've we've got to we've got to stop wasting our time and our energies on things that are failing. Yes, we've got to recognise right. failure for we what need it to walk is. Walk away instead of we could spend the rest of our lives doing something that's going to have no effect. Yeah, which let's face it, lots of parishes are. Yes, I, I, I've been to plenty of parishes where they say, you know, their their idea of evangelism is well, we've got a building here. Yeah. And that's literally their understanding of evangelism is well there's the building here if people want to come to it. Yeah. What a load of rubbish. Yeah. It's kind of like that, that kind of spirituality. Yeah, we've, got to, we've also got to cultivate a more muscular spirituality yeah. within ourselves. Because one of the things that the church is really struggling with is a lack of masculinity. Yeah. Is a lack of masculinity. Horrific. Horrific. Uh, you go to any church, it's usually one to four in terms of the male-female ratio. And the reason for that is if you have a feminine spirituality, you will only speak to women. And even then only to some. What we need is a masculine spirituality that when a lad from a council estate walks in, he doesn't cringe with embarrassment. But he thinks, actually, this is a brotherhood, these are a body of people, these are people that I can get involved who with. Who would die for me. And, and whom I am willing to die for. Exactly. That, I think it's making commitment to people who you might not like on a personal level, because there's so many personalities in the world, lots of Christians say, well, I'm more cliquey with people I feel comfortable with, but I think we need to grow up and say, me liking you is not the most important thing. Me trusting you is the most important thing, and you trusting me yeah. and us working together is far more more, more solid a basis than whether I like you because if I like you we're probably going to fall out yeah so those kind of things I think are very important but you mentioned I think one of the, the bars is if you homeschool generally speaking 
you're open to a more radical uh, counter, Vision. counter countercultural, yeah. yeah, exactly. So those things seem to be growing, yeah. And I think it's an, inev an inevitability that it will continue to grow as the, de I might say the, the state. De demonic situation of the education. Yeah, the is, state is, is the state is literally trying to propagate its yeah. ideology so I onto think our the children. Holy Spirit needs to be brought in here, and we need to. Well, I think he's already more, here. Yeah, you know, be more responsive to the things that he's already making happen. Yeah. So as more and more families choose to homeschool, they get more connected because they have to because they can't homeschool in isolation. Yeah. And then they uh, build up a relationship with each other. They reinforce their faith. So I think the homeschool movement is actually performing very, very well. Yeah. And I think now that lots of people are saying, well, look, maybe we can help you with your, you know, like the, uh, the Muslims have a madras yeah. they have on a Saturday. Yeah. That there are Christians who are willing to assist the parents who are open to life because they've normally got tiny little children. Well, we, 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 we've, we've got Sunday schools, but Sunday Sunday schools just become this let's tell a Bible story Colour nonsense. It's not dad, real yeah. it's not real it's not real discipleship. Because what, what children need to be raised is they need to be raised to think of their identity as Christian, yeah. to have a knowledge of Christian history, yeah. to have a clear understanding of what are Christian values. And, and to articulate their faith would help. Yes, yeah, yes, you know, exactly. To articulate, to, to be able to articulate those values, yeah. and to uh, be able to articulate and, and know what is the Christian vision of the world, the Christian sure. vision of life. Yeah. And, and what we've done is we've replaced all of that with with nothing but the sprinklings of religiosity. Let's learn a little Bible story here. Let's learn a little about like discipleship within so many diocesan structures is is at an all time low. Yeah. And, and parishes are dying for it. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and what needs to happen is there needs to be a consolidation. There needs to be a, the, the, the establishment of a living community, a living organism that is alive to doing things differently and new. Sure, sure. Yeah, not, 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 not bound to the structure just because the structure is there. We're not talking about getting rid of bishops. We're not talking about getting rid of priests. We're not talking about getting rid of deacons. Mm. What we're talking about is getting rid of the organization of parish and diocesis in, in the way that it is presently at and all the ills of the culture that have, have, have now become embedded within it. Could, could it be twinned with actually saying, well, look, we know you will continue doing what you're, you're doing and the sacraments are available, etc., etc. But as far as us relying on you to help us, we've given up because it's not going to happen unless we grow out into the deep and establish those things. I, I, I am confident that there will always be priests and bishops willing to get involved. Yes. There'll always be priests and bishops that will see the vision and get the vision and work with the vision. Generally speaking, they wouldn't be diocesan priests and bishops. These would be from these various religious societies. Priests, yeah. Priests society. They seem very, very much, and I think this is the fruit of the Holy Spirit because they're growing as well. Yeah. These kind of, and they're the ones who actually. Have would, so, thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. These, these are the people who actually are looking for the families. They're looking for the lost sheep. They have a have a. What's the word? They see themselves in, in the eyes of the good shepherd looking for the lost sheep and they will they will approach you and they'll say, look at you, there's six or seven of you, I can see you wearing second hand clothes and you obviously, you know, you look like you had a rough time. Yeah. Come and tell me how it's going. Yeah. Those kind of things as opposed to you go to the parish and basically there are no children, yeah. no children on a Sunday. Most of the people are either, you know, they're not British either, there's a dying out kind of I mean, thing. coming, coming yeah, back to this on. question about what the individual can do, I would say yeah. that it, it, it is better to connect with people that are already doing this yes. rather than necessarily start it from the beginning yourself yes, unless there's that. enough of you to do it at the same time yes. because usually these little initiatives will, will flounder and fail yeah. it is much better to, to identify where it's already happening yeah. and to put your weight and your energy into yeah. what is already going on yeah. And I actually think that Christians need to be willing to move. I do. Christians need to be willing to move. We need, yeah. we need to see that, sure. that, that this, this idea of the parish system that you're... Yeah. You, you, because one of the problems within the parish system yeah. is we're encouraged to live like salt and light out in the world. Mm. Yeah, and then you come back on a Sunday and, and you're meant to live your life quietly in such a way that impresses everyone. But the reality is it doesn't. Because no. you don't look any different. You don't sound any different. You don't do any different. You are not 
different. Yeah. Until you look different, sound different, and do different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm into that. And, 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 and that's the problem with lots of churches, is we like to talk the rhetoric of being different yeah. without any real thinking. What does different look like? Well, it actually looks different. Yeah, it actually yeah. does different. It actually sounds different. And you've got to be able to to resist that, that, that pride in you, because out of ten people you meet, nine might take the mickey out. Yeah. So let's say we're in Waterford, my wife wears a head cover and my children have all got long dresses and I'm wandering around and I don't know what, what on earth I look and I can see people going, in fact the only places we did fit in were in the diocese, the diocese, because we had a big family and we dressed modest and we homeschooled. We were the weirdos within our own but within the Amish Mennonites there was a context, oh you know them do you, ah now I can put you in a place, but not as a Catholic. I yeah. Something that scared them, but some of the sisters from the Franciscans of the Renewal, I thought they came up, they were talking, and it was like, what a what a great vision you could have of this all being brought together. But can I just say this, Bob? I think you have said the most important thing, you know, when to to to, to kick this off is to say, are you willing to move closer to a Christian friend? Is he willing to move? Are you willing to, to coalesce? Sacrifices to be more available to each other and your family. How many Christians, and, and one, one, one easy step for people that maybe don't have the finances to move is how many Christians are on your street? How many Christians are in your neighborhood? How often do we live together? Drive, it just, just hit me. We used to drive an hour and a half to see people, but we make sure we do it a couple of times a week. Yeah. Because we homeschooled and I was working from home. If you homeschool, it gives you the freedom to start to see each other more. Because the wife is, because what you have in most families, mum's working, dad's working, two separate places, children are in school. Yeah. There is no time apart from the weekend. And come the weekend, everybody wants to relax, enjoy themselves, and they don't want to do it. But homeschoolers, the dynamic of their life means their life, that is their life to visit yeah. and to have people come and visit them and from that you can say father will you give a talk yeah and if there was a good priest he'll come so you might have two or three families i remember when we were in ireland we had about seven or eight families came around all the boys were playing with swords and shields and things like that yeah. the priest said the mass in the barn we had a big old barn straw bales and things like that yeah great big meal shared thing bit of confession and at the end of the day everyone was drawn together from that experience yeah and that for me is where i'd love to be back at yeah I, I i think I, I, I agree, like, we've, we've got to offer a different vision of society, you know, and, and obviously you've got to regulate that in such a way as to avoid abuses or cultic behaviour or sure, controlling sure. behaviour, like, that, that is a principle of any Christian commune, any genuinely Christian commune will not be about control. A spiritual father can only advise you, they can't tell you what to do. Like, within a commune it's kind of like, it, it, it has got to be opt-in, not, not opt out kind know, of like you know because so many of these things go sour so quick there's almost an inevitability of some of these ad hoc we're going to start a very intense small group and shouldn't be the devil comes in you haven't got any 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 well maybe it's a bad priest maybe there are bad priests there are bad who, priests, who yeah. get involved in the whole thing and the, and the devil gets in so that's why I, I like more this diffused family centered but with, with with the center being where the religious brothers or the whereas i kind of prefer the bruderhof way of doing it yeah, whereas the family Family, yeah. which is the family is secondary to the unit okay yeah. one, one thing that I would say also needs to occur in the diocese yeah. the diocesan structure is that Christians need to take their own security seriously yeah because we we, we, we like that we live in an age so for example I'm gonna use Nisa Hussein Nisa Hussein was a, a, a Mus Nisa Hussein and his family were Muslims oh, yeah, who became yeah, Christians yeah, well, their whole family became Christians they had Muslim neighbors they, they, they lived in a Muslim area yeah. everyone was you know they, they, they had friends they obviously had their normal sort of ins and outs with people just like everybody does but then when they became Christian yeah. that's when the persecution started people who were their friends started persecuting them yeah. and what happened was the the bishop washed his hands of them yeah. because it was too politically sensitive to point sure. out that Muslims were persecuting Christians in Bradford. Yeah. And the Christian community is so insipidly weak, mm. so insipidly weak and so lacking in masculinity that the Christian community couldn't offer them any defence. They went to the police, the police didn't want to get involved, just told them to move out, as if that's acceptable. Mm. Mm. The police, that was their response is, well, you know, you being here is a problem, so leave. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and so. We're, we're going to see more of that. Mm. We're going to see more of that. 
and and I think that that, that when you get a commu commune, a Christian community coalescing, they that as well as all the evangelism and the discipleship and the education and providing for their own health care and mental health and these other sure. things that we've mentioned sure. and the spiritual fathers, they also have to take security seriously. Yeah. How to look after one another. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like and that might mean just training sure. the community in martial arts so that you know Christians become known as those group where they've got the disproportionate number of black belts right. in taekwondo yeah, yeah. and kung fu and what do you think about this because i was drawn to leaving cities leaving big urban areas because i think there are there are the benefits are i think living in creation is a good thing to raise a family having farm animals is good because it builds a relationship between father son mum, and daughter the, the farm is a great teaching and buying yeah. thing and I think that cities now, I mean, we're taught as Christians to avoid occasions of sin. Now, on a hot day in a city, young men, you know, we have to, we have to be cautious about the influences a city can have on our own spiritual life, knowing that we're weak. Yep. So I find that it's far more, the evidence seems to be from what I've seen, people who take it seriously saying, you know what, it's a boiling hot day, maybe I'm not going to take my 16-year-old son to the beach. Mm. Maybe we're going to go off and do something different. But just to, just to, just to be more aware that there are things that Christians prudently should avoid without sunny and hiding in a bunker and I think living in the countryside helps if you, if you can move into the countryside move out the city because the city is full of danger full of violence full of bad uh, impressionable things that your family growth in their spiritual and the unity with you is gonna is gonna is gonna struggle with I, I, I think I think that that I don't. I think there are advantages to living in the country, yeah. and I think that it is everything you're saying is really valid. Mm -hmm. However, I think that what we're talking about can also work in urban I areas. Do. I agree. I because agree. if you coalesce into a local community, yeah. you can start to change that culture. Yeah, if you're the ones that own all the shops, you can shut those shops down on a Sunday. Uh, yeah. You know, if you're the one that live in that area predominantly, and someone sticks up an advert that's rude or blasphemous or sure. indecent you can start to go, actually, we don't want that in our area. Good point. You know, you, you, know, that's, that's, that's really good point. you can influence the culture around you, yeah. but you've got to have a more robust spirituality that says, actually, no, we don't want to see that. We, you know, like... Yeah, yeah cause you, you know what, you've just turned another light that are dimmed for quite a long time. It's not necessarily what the parish will do for you, it's what you will do to the parish. I mean, yeah. Mother Teresa saying that love is a fruit never out of season. There's no limit to how much you can give. Now, quite often as Christians, we're sitting here waiting, saying, who's going to help us? We are the help. And when we realize we're the help, we're the help. But we need to help one another. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, yeah, we yeah, we yeah. need to own this struggle. Mm. The thing is, we can't turn the church into an NGO. What is the point of helping the poor of the, helping the, poor of the parish? Mm. What is the point of helping the single mother who's a non-Christian if we're not helping the single mother in the parish? What is the point of helping those with mental illness outside of the parish who are not Christian if we're not helping those who are struggling with mental health issues inside the parish. Okay. It's kind of like you've got skills, I've got skills, yeah. my skills might not be the same as your skills but when you need me to use my skills to bless you I do so and vice versa and then this brother does the same yeah. and then we all start sharing our skills with one another yeah. and then by doing that we might create some kind of structure yeah. That is strong enough that not only does it look after the Christian community, but then when we identify someone who's on the edge of that Christian community who could need our help, we're in a better position to bless them. But how can we bless other people if we don't bless our own? You know, that goes back to what I'd, I'd uh, witnessed and evidenced in the Amish Mennonite community. I mentioned to you that if, if a woman was uh, six weeks from having a baby, there would always be a hot meal brought, the, bang on, six o'clock, there was a rota around the whole community. If somebody needed uh, help building an extension, the church would come and help them. You didn't have to go and pay outsiders. You knew if you if you had to go away for a week, there would be people who you could trust who would look after your children. The whole of that community, like you were just saying, is, is, is you can, Imagine being able to put your shoulders down, relax, and have people you can trust who will assist you when you need it, and for them not to gripe about it. But one of the problems with the, the Mennonite community sure. is that is that they are not they are not, as it were, porous enough to evangelise and draw people in. I agree with you. The, the, Men the, the Mennonites have a problem where they, they, you know they, they, they've got the, they have to delineate the bloodlines yeah, to yeah, marry. Yeah, yeah, yeah so that they're not marrying people who are too close to their bloodline. And the Hussites, the Huttites, for example, are an example of a community where they're literally, they're, they're, they're collapsing inward because they haven't been 
evangelizing in enough an outward. They're living in an island yeah. and you can see that we, we don't, deficiency Exactly. Really that, that's the in. danger of setting oh, yeah, up a community well, like this. Yeah. You've always got to be drawing in fresh sure, blood. Sure. Always. But you know what, Bob? The things that I just articulated you about the help, those things used to happen in Glasgow tenement blocks. They used to happen in cities when communities still recognised each other, knew who they were, who, who they would live in the same street. They would raise their children together. They'd know. It, na nowadays, we live in streets where to rent, to rent, to rent, to rent. Yeah. You don't, no one, people are scared to make a commitment because it's everything's so fast you don't know where you're going but I think it's more to 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 this idea of community can be in the center of the, the worst city it can be in the countryside it can be absolutely anywhere but it's something that comes from you making the first the first offer of commitment and I like to say to people you know where I am if you ever need me 24 7 give me a ring and, and it, it's got to but those communities work when when you've got common values yes. common beliefs yeah like and a common sense of purpose yes. and that, that is something that lots of diocesan lack mm. they have no vision yep. the bishop is offering no vision he's offering no direction he's not saying this is what we're going to do this is what we're about he's not drawing people into a common purpose he's not drawing people into a common set of values you know with the catholic church the catholic dioceses have become characterizations of themselves yeah. you know it's like we're pro-life well he's, you, you don't build an entire civilization on being pro-life that is one aspect of a much wider picture sure, sure, and, and it's sure. like you, we've got to offer a fuller vision to society yeah. and we can only do that when we offer a, an alternate society For itself sure. as you said about the bishops exhorting people to a standard is what they christ, should be doing christ has laid down yeah and then encourage them when they fail is something that for me it was like I, I never heard that anything like that on the diocesan level but and galvanizing them to a purpose yes, yes like the christian community should be known as a community that you don't mess with they should be known as a community that that are charitable they should be known as a community that are generous they should be known as a community that love one another they should be known as a community of modesty they should be known as a community of virtue they should be known as a community of forgiveness but yet we're not known for any of those things what are we known for we are known for people standing on street corners and shouting at everybody we are known for scandalous uh you know abuses, uh, abuses. like and part of that is just because the media only wants to talk to us when something goes wrong sure but it's actually because the, the, but part of it is it's actually because there's nothing actually really positive being done in such a way that it stands out like the bruderhof stand out yes people know about the bruderhof people know about the amish yes. what are the amish known for the amish are known for building barns like that so but they're known for something different yeah and the Christian community at this moment is not known for something different because you can't do Christianity once a week you can't do Christianity once a week with a plus meeting in the middle of the week sure that is not how Christianity was ever meant to work it's not how the values are meant to work yes. you've got to do Christianity on a seven day a week basis and it starts with doing it with other Christians yeah